On behalf of the MGM Resorts family, I'd like to wish everyone happy holidays. MGM Grand welcomes the media, the fighters, and our partners at UFC as we close the 2013 UFC campaign with a sensational championship event at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. The UFC 168 event promises to be a tremendous rematch as undefeated champion Chris Weidman battles the former champion Anderson Silva for the second time in less than six months. Saturday night will also be a special evening as fans have the opportunity to watch two great female fighters settle their differences as rivals Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate step into the octagon. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta, Dana White, and the entire UFC staff. I'd also like to thank Keith Kaiser of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here. And now I'd like to introduce the president of UFC, Dana White. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Merry Christmas. Uh, you ready? You ready for Saturday night or what? I've been excited for this fight for a long time. It's been a great year. 2013, we've had some of the best fights ever in the UFC. And this year is the, uh, is the grand finale. I have literally, I, you know, I sell fights for a living, I know. But uh, I have been thinking about this fight since the first one ended. I've been so excited for this, uh, this fight, and now it's finally here on Saturday night. Who's got the first question? John? Yeah. For Chris, please. Uh, obviously, with, with GSP walking away recently, there's been a lot of talk about the pressure that champions have to face. Uh, what's this camp been like for you in, in your first campus champ? Has it been any different? Have you felt those types of pressures? Uh, you know, there's always pressures in, in every camp, uh, but for this one, it's actually been a lot less. I just feel like uh, I have a lot less on my plate this camp. A lot of things were going my way uh, compared to the last one. Last one, you know, I was coming off the year layoff, two surgeries, uh, Hurricane Sandy, and there was question marks in the back of my head. For this camp, there's zero question marks, zero reasons why I lose this fight, and uh, I don't even have to uh, even work on, you know, closing those doubts in my head. There is none. Thank you. For Rhonda, please. Kind of similar, you know, after the last fight, you admitted, you know, you were kind of burned out. You had just done so much, and it felt good to get away and be recharged. Now that you're back, you know, here in front of the press conference and, and getting ready for the fight, is, is there a different feeling? I mean, do you feel re-energized and refocused, or do you still feel a little frazzled? Uh, no, I feel great for this fight. Uh, it's been a long layoff between the two, and uh, I've really been able to reinvigorate my enthusiasm, and I think that uh, uh, GSP is kind of He's kind of right in that there's simplicity in the struggle and there's complexity in success. And uh, even though it's, it's complicated and it's crazy and it takes a lot of energy, um, that, that's the environment where I really thrive. And so um, I've been really been able to change it up and do a whole bunch of things in this last year. And I couldn't have been more excited to start camp again. And, you know, this is where I belong. This is where I feel right. Thank you. And, and just lastly for Misha, please, uh, you did a good job in the build-up to this of, of staying calm and not getting emotional, not you know, being baited a little bit, but Rhonda was gone filming movies, not doing a lot of interviews. Now that she's kind of back out in the media and, and starting that you know, discussion again and that talk a little bit, has it been a struggle this week to, to stay focused and to keep that calm, or, or how has it affected you? No, because I mean, I've been being asked questions about Rhonda for months on months, and I think there was nothing worse than dealing with her on The Ultimate Fighter, so a couple of interviews aren't going to scare me away. I'm here to fight. A question for Chris Weidman. Uh, Chris, the first fight, I think a lot of, right over here, I think a lot of people, a lot of fighters who uh, picked you to win that first fight thought that you would out-wrestle Anderson. We saw you have success with that in the first round, of course, before you knocked him out in the second. Did you see enough in that first round in terms of the wrestling game to let you know definitively what you think you can do with Anderson on the ground? Uh, yeah, you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like, you know, my bread and butter and my uh, biggest advantages in this fight is definitely the wrestling and jujitsu. 100%. And I felt, uh, I felt that in the first fight. A uh, question for Anderson. Uh, you've made some comments coming into this fight that you've made some changes to your camp, maybe some personnel around you, that sort of thing. Could you give us an idea specifically about what you've modified in your camp in that regard? 
Você falou que fez algumas mudanças na equipe. Fala um pouco quais foram essas mudanças no, nesse camp. A maior mudança foi, foi comigo mesmo. Acho que toda a minha equipe está de parabéns. Todos os treinadores fizeram sempre os seus trabalhos da, da, da melhor forma possível. E, na verdade, quem tinha que mudar era eu mesmo. É muito difícil você, é, você ser atleta e, e, e tentar ser treinador também. E, às vezes, é, você acaba falhando. Eu aprendi a lição e ouvi todos os meus treinadores dessa vez e a gente está preparado. I think the biggest change was really with myself. I have to congratulate my whole team. Everyone did a great job, but the change was really in myself. It's very hard at, at one point to be the fighter and the coach, and I knew I had to change something, so I have to thank my team, and uh, the change was really in myself. And finally for Misha, uh, Misha, obviously, uh, to your left, uh, sorry. Obviously, uh, you've, there's been a lot of focus on the fact of, or the idea of defending an armbar against Ronda Rousey, but you've talked a lot about the psychological evolution uh, with your approach to Ronda coming into this fight. In this camp, was it more important for you to evolve psychologically in terms of the way that you approached her even more so than, than working on defending an armbar? I think so. As much as this sport is physical, um, it's more mental and emotional. And I think as a fighter, for me, I had to learn that the hard way, you know, and I did. I learned that the far d hard way. I mean, the mistake that I made was a, was a physical mistake, but it was because I was out of my, my element emotionally and mentally. And I think that now that I've corrected that, it won't happen again. Thanks. Uh, pro Anderson. Anderson, você pensa se aposentar depois dessa luta, independente do resultado? Ou para talvez se dedicar ao Takando, ou se, sei lá, qualquer outra coisa do tipo. E você pretende lutar nas Olimpíadas? Você ainda tem esse desejo? Regardless of the result, do you think of uh, retiring after this fight? And uh, what are your plans after fighting? Do you still want to fight in the Olympics? Eu vou responder para você agora que nem o Ronaldo respondeu uma pergunta uma vez. Pô, é claro que eu vou voltar a jogar e estou uh, muito feliz. E queria. Queria dizer que, pô, vou voltar a jogar. I'm going to answer this one like Ronaldo did once. Of course, I'm going to go back and play, and I'm very happy. And of course, I'm coming back. Não, eu, 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 eu queria muito fazer isso, mas eu acho que é, eu não tenho tempo hábil para isso. Eu tinha que, acho que, nascer de novo para poder fazer tudo que eu gostaria de fazer. Né? Seria uma honra para mim é, representar o Brasil nas Olimpíadas no Taekwondo. Mas eu não tenho tempo hábil para isso e também eu acho que mamãe não quer, papai não gosta. Uh, I'd really like to represent Brazil in Taekwondo in the Olympics, but I really don't have enough time to do everything that I, I, I like to do. And uh, really, uh, I don't think that uh, daddy wants it. <laughs> Tem uma pergunta para o Anderson Silva aqui. Anderson, é, a mídia tem especulado bastante sobre o seu futuro depois dessa luta. Alguns dizem que você pode parar de lutar, outros dizem que tem a luta com o Roy Jones Jr. E até outros dizem, é, falam sobre a luta contra o Vitor Belfort, no caso de você ganhar. É, eu queria saber se o resultado dessa luta contra o Chris Weidman é, é, vai ser fundamental para você decidir o que, que você vai fazer. Ou não, se uma derrota uma ou derrota, uma vitória não, não, não tem diferença alguma. There's a lot of things being said about what could happen after this fight, uh, facing uh, Vitor or fighting Roy Jones. There's a lot of uh, debate out there. But uh, regardless, winning or losing, does, does this fight change any of that? Agora eu vou responder você igual o Filipão. Porra, claro que tem. Porra. Que pergunta? Porra, claro que tem. Porra. Não. É... Cara, olha só. É... Eu tenho oito lutas aí no meu contrato. E... Assim, enquanto eu tiver vontade de fazer o que eu faço, eu vou continuar fazendo. Pode ser que sim, pode ser que não, a gente não sabe se eu vou me aposentar ou não. Isso é um... Não, não tem como eu te dizer isso agora. Né? Eu acho que são coisas assim que é, só o coração pode dizer, né? Yeah, I still have eight fights left in my contract, and as long as I'm still enjoying and I still want to have that desire to go out there and fight, I'm going to keep on fighting. And if I'm going to retire now, there's no way to say that right now. That's something that's going to come from the heart. Hello, my first question is for Chris. 
Uh, in the last fight, some people had questioned your ability of your conditioning to be able to go the full five rounds. How did you feel about that during this camp, and how hard did you work uh, to be able to go a full five? Uh, yeah, uh, I think my cardio is probably one of the things that I've, uh, like, you know, the most pride about out of all the things I have uh, that I do in training. Yes, my uh, training partners is probably, I mean, that's not even a question. So I, I worked really hard for this camp, and uh, conditioning is uh, going to be one of my big advantages. And question for Travis. This uh, year has been a very, very big year for you. You've had a huge win over Overeem, but you faced some adversity in that fight. What did you learn from that fight and your ability to uh, weather the storm? Um, uh, you know, I learned where I didn't want to be in a fight. <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, just you learn a lot about yourself when you're put in a difficult situation and you pull through. Um, anybody does, everybody does. But, um, you know, just you learn what you're about as a man and or as a woman in, in this sport. There's no there's nobody else to blame but yourself, you know. Um, so what you see is, is what you get and it's and it's 100 percent real and honest. So um, I learned a lot about myself, but. You know, it doesn't, I already knew that about myself. I just proved it, I've just proved it to everybody else. So, yeah. And going up against Josh Barnett, he's been a veteran of the sport for quite some time. What, where do you see yourself with your confidence level going into this fight? How ready do you feel? I've, I've fought veterans my entire career. I mean, people don't understand that complete training. I've been, any kind of martial arts, it's been five years. You know, I was a basketball player before that. So I'm number five in the world with five years under my belt. And uh, I have a long way to go. Every day I'm learning so much. Watching, watching these women fight, watching, you know, growing up watching Anderson and, and even watching Josh fight, you learn a lot. And uh, every time I turn on the TV, watch a fight, or I go train, I learn so much. And that's the scary part, is that I have not even reached my potential yet. Thank you. Pergunta para o Anderson. Anderson, da última vez que você lutou, você disse que estava sofrendo uma pressão muito forte na coletiva de imprensa. Você, inclusive, disse que estava tirando um peso das suas costas. O que é mais difícil? O peso de ser campeão ou o peso de ter que recuperar o cinturão agora, a pressão que estão colocando para que você prove ainda que ainda é o melhor de todos? In the last fight, you said there's a lot of pressure with being champion, and you even said uh, in the press conference after the fight that it's a weight off your back. What's harder? Is it the weight of being the champion or having the pressure of coming and regaining the belt? Eu acho que é, quando você é um lutador do UFC, você vai ter sempre pressão na tua vida, não tem como, né? E é, graças a Deus eu alcancei é, um estágio em que é, eu consegui fazer um, um, feitos aos quais é, foram, foram gratificantes para mim e, e trouxeram todo, todo esse peso para a minha carreira e para a minha vida. Mas eu estou muito feliz... Estou contente por não estar com esse peso todo nas costas de novo, mas vai começar tudo de novo daqui uns dias. Está preparado para? Tô. Agora eu tô. As a UFC fighter, you always have a lot of pressure going into the fights, and uh, thankfully I was able to do a lot of things in my life that brought that pressure onto me, and a lot of things that I did, and and uh, you know the pressure is there, and in a few days the pressure is going to be all back with me. Question for Ronda. Uh, Ronda, you said in some interviews that you kind of create this rivalry with, with Amisha uh, back in the days that you decided to do MMA for a living. Uh, looking back, uh, would you still do the same thing? Or uh, did you think that this rivalry would be so big in your life and your career? Uh, yeah, if I had to go back, I would definitely do the same thing because I think that's what really created so much interest for the fight the first time. And um, I think that if I... Oh, if we didn't create that rivalry. I'm not sure if uh, you know Dana and the Fertitas would have been watching that fight in the first place. It's because people were interested in it for some reason. And um, for the time, I think it was definitely w exactly what was needed. Everybody was playing the Miss America card, and though there were great fights, no one was really watching them. So I kind of, I think a, a spectacle had to be created at first. Is it hard to keep motivating to face the same person again, like the same fighter again for you? 
Um, it's definitely hard to get motivated for the same goal twice. You know, I, I've beat Misha before, I've won the UFC belt before, and that's part of the reason that I went in to, to go film these movies before camp. I wanted to make it more difficult on myself. I wanted to do something that people would doubt. And I don't want to ever put myself in a situation where it's a lose-lose because if you win, it's like, oh, of course you won. And if you lose, it's the end of the world. I want every single time that I have a fight coming up, people to have a reason to doubt. And so that's what really made me super motivated for this fight is I made it even more impossible for myself, and I'm going to do it anyway. Same question for Chris. I mean, is it hard for you to get motivated to beat Anderson again? And uh, how do you think he's going to be different in this fight? I mean, mentally, in the mental part. Yeah, uh, no lack of motivation at all. You know, Anderson Silva is known as the greatest of all time. Uh, going into the first fight, it was a dream come true to fight him, and uh, a fight that I was dreaming about uh, happening since I got into mixed martial arts. And I knew if I was to beat him, we were going to have a rematch, and here it is. So my dream's not complete. I got to beat him on Saturday, and so no lack of motivation at all. How do you think he's going to be different in this fight, in the mental part? Uh, how do I think he's going to be different? Uh, that's a question for him. I have no idea. I have no idea, and I don't really care, to be honest. That's up to him. Minha pergunta é para o Dana White. A gente sabe que essa luta no Brasil, obviamente, é uma luta que está fazendo o maior sucesso. A gente tem aqui um público brasileiro gigantesco que veio para Las Vegas assistir a luta. Mas a pergunta que o brasileiro é meio ansioso, né? E a gente é, sabe que o Vitor Belfort está vindo aqui para a cidade. Ele é o próximo desafiante ao cinturão? Obviously, this fight is huge in Brazil. There's a lot of Brazilian fans over here. But Brazilians are anxious, and we know Vitor is going to be in town. Is he the next contender? Yeah, I think Vitor has earned the right to, uh, to face whoever the winner is. Uh, you know, Vitor has been out there fighting, taking, uh, taking on all comers. And uh, yeah, he's next in line, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, this fight's big in Brazil. This fight's big everywhere. Like I said, when I started the press conference today, I, uh, as soon as this fight was over, you know, I, I, it was over on Saturday. I was in L.A. with him on Thursday trying to make the next one. So uh, I've been excited for this fight since the first one ended, and this fight's big all over the world. Uh, Chris here. Uh, do you think you have to, uh, any special stuff to prove in this fight? Even you knock him out, uh, Anderson, in the first round, some people said you got lucky in the first uh, fight. Uh, I, I got a lot of proof to myself. You know, uh, obviously I have a lot of doubters out there. Um, and, you know, I'm never going to be done proving them wrong. There's, there's always going to be plenty of doubters. But my goal is just, you know, to be the best me out there, go out there, get a finish, and, and do it in, a, you know, in an in impressive fashion. You know, I just want to shine out there and, and show that this is my belt and that I'm going to be here for a long time. Thank you. Uh, Ronda, um, I don't know as you know, but do you have a lot of uh, Latino fans uh, that people know that you have a Venezuelan blood in your body. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, it's, it's really, really flattering. And it, it feels great that uh, when, when I was younger, people wouldn't believe that I was half Venezuelan. I don't look like it. I look like my dad. And so um, I never really got any cultural recognition as a kid. And um, uh, it's kind of a shame that people treat you how you look like. And uh, I, it, it feels great, especially uh, uh, my mom and her whole side of the family is super excited about it now. And um, I have a lot of cousins and stuff still in Venezuela. And uh, it, it's nice to really be able to have a venue to, you know, re re regain a connection with my roots. Hello, here, Dana, here, Alini. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> Just a question. Uh, uh, we see George Burnett fighting against Rodrigo Nogueira. When we are going to see maybe some fight in Japan with both of them, what do you think about that, about between them? Uh, between no, no, Noguera and yes. Barnett? Well, Josh Barnett, if Josh Barnett wins on Saturday night, Josh Barnett is at the top of the tier right now. I mean, he's one of the best guys in the world. Um, you know, no, Noguera has a fight coming up uh, in the next couple of months. I, I can't remember exactly when it is, but... Um, Noguera is going to have to work his way back up to Josh Barnett. Okay, and Ronda, uh, as Armenian, I have to say, what is the influence about the, the Glendale, the highest and top team for you, the camp? Uh, tell us a little more about that. Um, well, wow, there's so much I could say. <laughs> 
but I, I, think, I guess I really just feel so honored that they, they brought me in. My, uh, my mom used to uh, train with Goko Chibichian back when she was doing judo back in the 80s, and that's really the only reason why I was really brought in as a kid. And they always made me feel so comfortable and so respected and um, it's so exclusive, you know. They don't really allow anybody in there, and they really um, always help me feel special. And um, the, the kind of real uh, loyalty and like just real strict morals that they seem to have, I just, I admire them so much and I really try to a adopt as many things as possible from mm -hmm. them. And uh, I just have no lack of languages. I've been trying to learn Armenian. I, I'm, I'm not doing that well. <laughs> I'm not, uh, Marlous, that's, that's the one that I got right now every morning. I got that one. So, um, but yeah, I'm very, very fortunate and lucky. And, um, and yeah, I'm I'm planning a trip to Armenia very soon. Me pergunta por Anderson. Você passou bem mais tempo com sua família nessa preparação. Queria saber se foi você que fez isso ou foi alguma coisa combinado com sua equipe. E o que que isso foi diferente para te motivar para a revanche? You spent a lot of time with your family in this camp. Was that something you wanted or something that your team suggested? Não, eu, eu optei por, por vir treinar na minha academia em Los Angeles e ficar mais perto da minha família. Me senti bem melhor do que das últimas vezes. Porque todas as outras vezes eu passei meu campo no Brasil e longe da minha família, três, quatro, cinco meses. Então era um pouco mais difícil. Mas essa vez foi legal, foi bom. Yeah, I decided to go to LA and train at my gym in Los Angeles and I, I felt much better doing that. I didn't have to spend uh, three, four, five months away from my kids. Got a question for Chris down here in the front row to your right. You said that you had practiced leading up to the first fight with guys dealing kind of, you know, messing with you, doing weird stuff, you know, putting their hands down. What did that mean, really? Can you go into a little bit of an explanation about that? What were, like, the focuses that you wanted to keep in mind? If Anderson starts doing this, I have to respond in this way. You know, just, uh, you know, I didn't want anything to happen for the first time inside the cage, so I just wanted some type of... Uh, you know, just get used to it a little bit. So when you guys were doing it and sparring, it helped me once I got into the fight with Anderson, you know, kind of prepare for that. Just having his hands down and, and working from there, keeping your mind right, and that was it. What does it mean, keeping your mind right? Because you said, you know, in that fight that you did, you got pissed off yeah. and you went after him and tried didn't to work. knock him out. It didn't so work. <laughs> was that actually, like, the reaction that you didn't want to happen going in there? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I did. I was, I guess... I guess so. I guess you don't you don't want to lose you know lose your your head a little bit, uh, and I did, and it worked out for me. So for this one, I don't really know. I'm just gonna just be me. If I get pissed off, I guess I get pissed off. I don't know. <laughs> Question for Anderson. Uh, over here in the back. <laughs> um, Chris Weidman was the first fighter to defeat him in the UFC. He broke your huge uh, win streak and took the championship. Which would you say is bigger, uh, to win back the belt or to defeat the first man to beat him in the UFC? O Weidman was the first to beat you in the UFC and break your record of invincibility. What is more important, to win the guy who was the first to beat you or to take the cinturon back? The most important is to be here in the UFC fighting for my fans. The rest is... What's most important is to be here in the UFC and fighting for my fans, and everything else is just a consequence. And it's a question for Dana as well. Uh, the last two UFC Swedens have been in April, uh, but most of the Swedish fighters are booked for the spring. Is there any word on when the next UFC event in Sweden will be? I don't know yet, no. And if I can just have one last for, uh, for Josh Barnett. Uh, Travis has some pretty... Uh, sorry, Josh Barnett. Uh, Travis has some pretty unusual striking techniques, Superman punches, front kicks. Uh, what do you do to prepare for someone with that kind of striking style? Well, I, I, uh, being from the Pacific Northwest, we, are, we have the... Indeed! <laughs> if we get into a fight, we got two of us. All right. <clears throat> uh, being from the Pacific Northwest, uh, we have the giant Pacific octopus. So we put some gloves on one of those and just sort of hopped it up on a bunch of Zions and spun it around the ring at me. I figured it couldn't be any more unusual than that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that well to it. It inked me in the face, and, and I couldn't see it. It got a whole bunch of shots off. That, you know. But luckily, to my knowledge, while Travis has grown a very regal beard, which I'm quite impressed with, uh, I don't think he squirts ink. So 
I feel pretty confident there. Question for Anderson. What did Dana say to you at the, at the last uh, luncheon that you had where you, after 162, you said you weren't going to do a rematch, and then four days later you have lunch with Dana and Ed goes to the bathroom and you agree to do the fight? What was said in that thing that he talked you into it? O que, que o Dana te falou na, quando vocês se encontraram em Los Angeles depois da última luta? Ele falou, o Ed foi no banheiro e vocês fecharam a luta? I can't wait to hear this. Ai, ai, na verdade ele pô, só falou, cara, a casa é tua, você sabe que qualquer decisão que você tomar vai, a gente vai aceitar, mas a gente acha que você deve continuar porque é, você você tem que fazer isso, você precisa fazer isso e, e eu agradeci, agradeci a ele e ao, ao meu adversário por me dar essa chance de lutar pelo cinto de novo. In reality, uh, he said, you know, Phil at home, but uh, we think you should do this. We think you should come back and go in there. And uh, I thank my opponent and I thank Dana for making this happen again. Anderson, when, when you got there, had you made up your mind, hey, I, I do want to fight, or did he actually talk you into it that day? E quando chegou na moça, já estava com a cabeça feita que queria fazer a revanche, ou ele teve que te convencer? Na verdade, depois que caiu a ficha, depois que eu saí da última luta, é... Eu, eu, eu fui para o quarto, dei uma pensada e tal. Falei, pô, acho que agora é a hora de parar, né? Eu acho que deu. Né? Mas aí eu peguei o telefone e falei com meu filho. Meu filho falou para mim assim, pai, faça o que tem que fazer e esquece o resto. O que vai te fazer feliz é o que você gosta, então vai até o final. After the last fight, after the dust settled, uh, I was sitting thinking alone and, you know, thinking maybe I should stop, maybe this is it. But uh, I got on the phone with my son and my son said, hey, you know what, Dad, do what you want to do, do what makes you happy, and that's what I'm doing. Dana, did you go to that meeting with the belief that you could convince him or did you have any doubts in your mind that you would get it done? I felt going into that meeting that he wanted that rematch, that he wanted to come back and that he wanted it. Uh, you know, you can't... You can't make anybody do something that they don't want to do. It's not like I have this Jedi mind power over anybody. It's I, I showed up to a meeting that I thought that he wanted this fight, and, and I was right. He, uh, he, he was actually fired up in that meeting, and, and he wanted the fight. Uh, question for Chris. Uh, Chris, how does this one feel as opposed to the first one in the lead-up? Uh, is it still that me-against-the-world type deal, or... You know, do you feel like, hey, I'm the champ and he's got to take this from me? Uh, it kind of feels uh, uh, similar. You know, just a lot less stress in this camp. You know, the last camp was, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, I was rehabbing my shoulder towards the beginning of it and trying not to get hurt and just trying to, I know this is the biggest fight. It was going to be the biggest fight of my life. And I just couldn't get injured and uh, get as much sparring as possible because I knew I was going to have to deal with some rust. It was just a lot of stress just to, just to get all that off. And this fight was just less, less stressful with, uh, with that. Just, I went in there, I was able to, you know, kind of just work on new things instead of being so stressed on uh, some of those other stuff. So I don't know if I really even answered your question, but all right, good. Uh, Josh, you are one of the few, you know, top level fighters who worked with women fighters throughout your career, like Shayna and Megumi. What did you see in them that said, I'm going to put this much time into them and did you ever see a day happening where, you know, co-main event, you know, women are headlining? Uh, I didn't look at them as women or men or anything like that. I just saw tremendous people with tremendous athletic ability and talent. And I knew that I could help them achieve something that they wouldn't be able to do just on their own. Uh, same with how I work with men, the, the few men that I work with. Uh, basically to give back from all the people that have put into me and all the tradition and the knowledge. You know, the knowledge just doesn't come from that one individual. I mean, there were the people that trained them, the people that trained the people that trained them. And, and when you think about it sometimes, there's hundreds of years put into one, that culminate into one person. And so I feel it's a responsibility for me to take that knowledge and keep it alive and keep the, keep the fire burning. So as far as where women's MMA is at, at this point, you know, um, I felt that if it's exciting, if there's interest, there'll always be the opportunity. So 
we'd seen it before with uh, Gina Carano and Elite XC, and she was able to do things that were outside of fighting, which helps a lot. You know, fighting is, is a pretty popular sport at this point, but there's still a lot of other areas where there are people that aren't familiar with our sport, that aren't familiar with the athletes, and you know, if they get even just the smallest inclination of having an, of, of this person being interesting to them, no matter how they've seen them, and, uh, and then following that person back over, that's excellent. So it's great to see that there are women alongside the men because at the end of the day, it's just great fights and great fighters. I have a question for Dana. Uh, Verdun keeps saying that he's going to wait for Cain Velasquez. Is there any confirmation about uh, the winner of Josh Barnett versus Travis Browning is going to, to face Verdun? Yeah, that's what we're planning. Tem uma pergunta para o Anderson também. É, Anderson, você, depois que perdeu para o Eidman, você disse que ia correr atrás de, de, de algumas raízes antigas suas e uma delas foi que você trouxe de volta o seu treinador, Diógenes, para o seu camp. Queria que você falasse um pouquinho disso aí. After uh, the last fight, you said you're going to go back to your roots, and uh, one of the things you did was bring back your coach, Diógenes. Talk a little bit about that. Na verdade, a gente a gente optou por eu juntamente com todo o resto da equipe, com o Ramon, com o Rogério Camões, que é meu preparador físico, é, é, e com o Pedro Rizzo, com todo o resto da equipe, a gente decidiu trazer o Diógenes de volta, que é uma pessoa que entende bastante do que acontece ali dentro. E foi legal, eu acho que toda a equipe está de parabéns, é, é, o André Galvão que me ajudou muito nos treinos, é, o pessoal que veio de Cuba para me ajudar na parte de wrestling, está todo mundo de parabéns, meu professor de boxe, Edelso, está todo mundo de parabéns. My team and I, uh, we decided to bring back Diogenes and I think it was a, a good thing, I think my whole team uh, needs to be congratulated, everyone that helped me throughout, the Cuban wrestlers that came in and helped me, everything was uh, very good and I have to thank my team. So a question for both Josh and Travis. Uh, gentlemen, we have a uh, charter fight full of Hawaiians coming to uh, see the fight. What are your, uh, what are your uh, thoughts on that? My thoughts on a charter flight full of Hawaiians? <laughs> you, uh, Mr. Bernay, you spent some time in Hawaii. I was just wondering, I've seen, excuse me, uh, Hawaiian fans. I love Hawaiians. I mean, my career, and started my career in Hawaii. Uh, I think the place is fantastic. I've got a lot of fans in Hawaii, and. Um, I hate to make them choose sides, but I think, you know, at the end, they don't really care that much as long as we get in there and start punching each other in the face well. By the way, that's a very nice sweater. I, I like that. It's, it's, it's not just a straightforward sort of thing. It's got the little leather clasp on there. Sort of a throwback to uh, a bit of 80s fashion, but I like it. I don't know how to top that answer. So... You know, just having having people here to support you. You know, it's always it's always what this uh, what this sport's about. And you know, people of Hawaii, the the state that I come from, and the people that I come from. You know, the, there's so much respect there. You know, whether whether they're rooting for me to win or they're rooting for Josh to win, it really doesn't matter to me. It's about the respect and having having your people there to to watch a, an event like that and um you know i think uh the the people of hawaii need to understand too or i think they already understand that you know having having these boys in here myself and all the other hawaiians Tavares, holloway and stuff is it's a tribute to hard work and dedication to something that we love you know and i think a lot of the generation these days are asked to have stuff handed to them and it's unfortunate but um, you know, I think uh, them coming over on a charter flight shows, you know, that, that we're making making noise in the UFC and in sports in general. We just want to, we just need to show that, that it comes from hard work, not just from somebody handing you something. Uh, I'm going to ask Chris Weidman. Uh, Além do Anderson Silva, a gente tem o Lioto Machida, a gente tem o Ronaldo Jacaré, tem o Vitor Belfort, super perto do Tyro Short. É, você está preparado para, quem sabe, vencer de todos eles se tornar o inimigo número um do Brasil? Chris, uh, besides, uh, <laughs> besides Anderson... I wanted to hear the answer to that. He was going to answer it. <laughs> Impressive. Besides Anderson in the middleweight division, there's Lioto Machida, there's Vitor Belfort, there's Jacaré, there's a lot of guys in there. Are you ready to be uh, maybe Brazil's number one uh, 
Bad guy? <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I know there's definitely a lot of angry Brazilians ready for me after this fight for sure, and I'm ready to take them on. <laughs> Love Brazil, though. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a couple more questions. Who's got one? Anybody? We done? All right, go ahead. Um, this question for Josh. To your left. <laughs> How are you? Um, you and Travis are obviously at very different points of your career in terms of, you know, he's, as you mentioned, he's only been in the sport for five years. You've been around quite a bit longer. At this point of your, your career, is there anything you feel that you can prove that you haven't already by beating someone like Travis specifically? Um, it isn't specific about Travis. Uh, the fights are fights. I've fought guys in, in Travis's position for four, and I've been in Travis's position. You have to win the fights in front of you. Uh, the other stuff is interesting to write articles about and ponder and argue with your buddies, but in, honest, in, in all honesty, it doesn't really make that big of a difference to most of the fighters. Uh, although, I mean, you can draw uh, inspiration or motivation from any kind of source that you'd like to. You could just be like, man, I can't wait till I can afford a plaid shirt and sit up here and ask questions. You just never know where, where that inspiration is going to come from. But uh, I know that Travis is a serious guy, and he's serious about his career, and he's serious about coming to the ring and beating me on Saturday. So believe me, I'm just as serious about winning all, not just this fight, but any fight that you put in front of me. And with Kane injured, um the belt's going to kind of be on ice for a little while. And I assume, obviously, that's your goal in the mm -hmm. long run. You're 36. You're performing really well, but 36 for an athlete is sort of getting up. Yeah, there. I'm an old guy. Yeah. Um, old guy. I mean, uh, is there a frustration level to that, the fact that... The, I, I don't the get that frustrated, you know, as long as the wheels on my walker are greased. I'm good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the day that I can, I can eat my, my dinner at 5 and get it for a discounted rate. And, uh, you know, I think that the... The new rascals that are coming out are, are very, very stylish. They got, they're a little quicker, too, you know. You know me, I'm a big car guy. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> I'm old, yeah, who cares, you know. Stick the belt on ice, just keep a bottle of whiskey there for me as well. Listen, I want to thank all the people who flew in from all over the world to come in and see this event on Christmas, uh, Christmas week. I'm going to get these fighters up here and square them off for photo ops. Thank you very much. We'll see you at the weigh-ins tomorrow.